You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast. My name's Andrew Mackay-Smith, and this is a conversation between myself and Willie DeSomero. Willie's from the Philippines. He's the fella at the centre of an excellent underground blackish metal outfit called Omen Filth. They've got a new album out. It's called Hymns of Diabolical Treachery. So I guess that's the reason for the conversation, but another very good reason is to talk to Willie all about the Filipino metal scene. So let's hear what he has to say. Here we go. That's all good. How have you been? Glad you called at the right time. <laughs> oh, uh, I tend to be that one. Go- going good. Cool. Whereabouts are you? Okay. Where, whereabouts are you in the Philippines? What? Uh, excuse me. Can you repeat that? Whereabouts are you in the Philippines? What state? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually from from the province, from Laguna. Uh huh. My wife's family is yep. from Cebu, uh, specifically Lapu Lapu City. Hey, good to hear your wife from the Philippines also. Yeah, yeah. well, she's yeah. she's she's born from here. Cebu. From yeah. Cebu City, we played there in 2015, I think. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask you all about that actually. Yeah. So, um, the, the whole Filipino scene, because I go to the Philippines quite a bit, and also I was there last year. It wasn't in Lapu Lapu City. It might have been in. I'm not too familiar with some of the cities that are around Lapu Lapu City, but I'm pretty sure Angel Corpse uh, came through town. So you must get a lot of black metal bands that are touring. Actually, it, there's a pretty small metal scene here. In actually, there is no metal scene here in our city. You know, but in some bigger cities, you you, you can have a, a lot of different bands and metal scenes, like in Manila or Cebu or in Davao, but. Here in my own town, this is pretty much it, you know, we had three metal bands here and that's that. And so uh, there's um, there's no place to play here around, actually. So where do, where do you get to play? to play? Yeah, where do you get to play around town? Is there, Do you get, have to go to people's um, homes and halls? Mostly in Metro Manila, which is the nearest, the nearest big city from our province. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So what inspired okay. you to create this music, mate? If there was no scene around, you're obviously very independent and got a lot of talent. So what inspired you to start? Uh, boredom, I guess. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> I don't know, really, back in, back in the 90s when I was growing up, there was really not much else to do other than go to concerts and attend some local shows from local bands. Uh, and and then eventually I I got into uh, more more heavier kind of music, darker music, and uh, and um, and all started from there. I started picking up fanzines and doing the DIY thing, and uh, hmm. that's where it all began for my uh, for my band Omen Tilt and my older band Pathogen actually. Omen to originally started as a side project okay. in 2013. Yeah. Yeah. You must be thrilled, though, that Omen Filth is getting such a positive response because I'm get looking, I'm reading the reviews that you're getting from the international media types and you're getting a lot of praise for it. In a lot of ways, I think that you're highlighting Philippine underground extreme metal. So, what's the feedback been like? We're actually surprised by the reaction, by the reaction of the people who, who have. Re- I mean, we are all of our. We have two albums so far, and uh, the first one was recorded in 2015. Yes, that's right, 2015, and it was actually released. That the first album's title is called Opus Centenarium, and uh, it was released on CD by a uh, by, by a label from New Zealand, actually. New Zealand. And, and it didn't do. Yeah, Pusakal Records from New Zealand. Mm. It, it didn't it didn't make the kind of waves that it did compared to the uh, to this one that our to our latest album, um, Hymns of Diabolical Treachery. I don't know what I don't. I, I'm I'm we're all we're all stumped and surprised about uh, the kind of reaction. Like I was saying before, kind of reaction we had from the media and from generally everyone who have heard it. I'm surprised. I, I didn't know. I don't know why. I just we just try to um, write the best music that we can. Well, it's all it, about it. it doesn't surprise me that there are very talented musicians in the Philippines. Obviously, because my wife's family coming from there. Every time I've been over there, I've heard such extraordinary musicians. I'd even go so far as to say the very best guitarist I've ever seen in my life 
was playing in the Philippines, was a Filipino guitarist. So does it, there are, there are a lot of... You're right, you go. You, you, you go to... Uh, you, you have never, do you have ever had a chance to go to local metal shows here? None. No, I, I went to... My, my <laughs> wife's auntie takes us to, like, some clubs where they just have bands uh, playing, and they're playing, like, Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple, and they'll actually ask... Uh, these bands, they're such good musicians that they'll say, what do you guys want to hear? And I'll go, well, like, I like heavy metal, so what do you know? And they go, they'll launch into Stairway to Heaven, but was, the guitarist yeah. will, will play it better than bloody Jimmy Page plays it. So... <laughs> So, <laughs> so you so you so you uh, so you watch some uh, bar bands, I think. Yeah, watch some bar bands. Movies. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen. Yeah. Any metal. I'd love to see some metal shows over there, mate. And if I, I'm planning on going over. We always go over there every year or thereabouts, mate. So if I'm over there, I'll I'll hit you up on Facebook, and I'll try and get to yeah. where you are. And I'd love to go and see you guys play or go to a show with you. Uh, City actually has a very big metal scene. I thought you were aware of that. No, no idea. No, no idea. It's hard for us to find information the, out about it unless we know people. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, but it's it's um, I know there are a lot of you. You know that there are you. You probably even got relatives here in Australia because there's a lot of people who have relatives in the Philippines and have people in Australia that are from either country. Oh, and. Um, you know, well, there are a lot of Filipino musicians that they might be born in Australia, but they've got Filipino heritage, but they play heavy metal oh. as well. So I was always aware that there was an inclination for Filipinos to like heavy metal. Actually, heavy metal is still very much an underground phenomenon here in the Philippines. I mean, it's not like in other Asian countries like Thailand or Malaysia or Indonesia where they have really huge metal scenes and, you know, it, and it's quite popular compared to the Philippines. It's still very much an underground phenomenon here. Okay. Never mind the fact that that the their metal bands in the Philippines have existed since the early eighties. Yeah. Or probably even earlier. Yeah. Yeah, actually I've been I do follow and you're right about Indonesia. They've got an enormous metal scene and I can't remember the name of their president, but he's even been photographed wearing Napalm Death T shirts. Oh, the Indonesian president, I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I forgot his name too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think you'd ever see uh, Duterte wearing a Napalm Death T-shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I think he's a metal fan. He likes the, the underground stuff. Oh, really? There you go. Okay, there you go. Yeah. 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 So, so let's um, talk, let's talk about your album, Hymns of Diabolical yeah. Treachery. That's okay. I, so. Yeah, sure. I, I'm, I'm very interested in a Filipino metal band. There's no doubt about that. But the quality of the material here is outstanding. And I think that's what people are picking up on globally is that you're producing some excellent early 90s sounding Norwegian style black metal. So that's that's four of the cuts. But then the fifth cut, Black Ritual of Demonic Possession, sounds a bit like some of the Burzum material. So can you tell me a bit about the stylistic differences on the, on the release? Uh, hymns of Diabolical ter Treachery? Well, as you can see, the first half of the record was kind of like our typical songs, which are very much influenced by um, European and some other Brazilian bands from the 80s and 90s. And, uh, mm. and the second half of it is actually, well, it was improvised. It's like six minutes long improvisation. It, it was actually... Um, Influenced by a lot of, uh, I was listening at that time when I wrote it to, to German kraut rock from the 70s, some weird, strange stuff, you know. <laughs> but, and, <laughs> and and the funny thing about those bands from the 60s and 70s, they were into um, into imp improvising, you know, just like jazz or something. Mm. And it was cool to do. That, that entire track, we, we, we pulled it off in one take. We pulled it off on one take. We, there, there are no overdubs of that track. Extraordinary, yeah. yeah. And, I, and, I have, and I have to make up the lyrics. And I don't remember them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> do you get, do you get a lot of... The lyrics, yeah. Are you getting a lot of feedback from reviewers and from people on Bandcamp that they really like what you've done with Black Ritual of Demonic Possession? 
Uh, the reviews I've read so far were pretty much across the board. Some of them liked it, some of them, some of them hated it, of course, some of, and some of them just didn't get it. I understand why. I, yeah. I know some of those diehard metalheads can be so close-minded when it comes to music. I mean, I mean you listen to a lot, a whole lot of stuff that's only metal, you know. Like I said, I like a lot of those 70s German bands, yeah, crowd rock and psychedelic stuff and everything else in between. We're just big music fans, not just metal. Of course, metal is a very big, very huge part of our lives. It's my favorite music still. Mm. But but we're more open to um, a lot of other different music that a typical metalhead m- might not appreciate or or something like that or you know. Yeah, it surprises me when you say kraut rock because I I I guess I can hear it now that you've mentioned it, but it wasn't the thing that came to mind when I was listening to it. I actually huh. <laughs> this might surprise you, but. I've been listening to it to go to sleep. So it's not that it puts me to sleep, but it's very... I like a lot of that sort of music when I'm trying to go to sleep. I, I listen to... Um, yeah, I, I listen to an artist from Sweden called Trepanering's Ritual, and who plays very different music, mate, a bit like what you've done there with that cut. And that helps me go to sleep too, so... Uh, really? I really? This helps you go to sleep? Yeah, it does, believe it or not. Yeah, this sort of music does, yeah. It doesn't give me nightmares either. I quite enjoy it. It makes me happy. <laughs> You know, so, so have you got? I kind of stop listening to music when I'm trying to sleep because my ears are already ringing listening to metal all day and other stuff. You know. Oh, I can imagine. I kind of give it a break. What do you What do you do during the day? Like, what do you do for a job? Well, I, I do have some part time work and everything. I used to have a regular job, but I just did you know, um, some some of some of the band members are working somewhere else in Metro Manila and and another one was is unemployed at the moment. So uh we had a lot of time to uh make music <laughs> and jam. Yeah, it's tough mate. I, I know first hand, yeah. Yeah, it's very difficult economy over there to keep a job, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The econ- the economic situation here is uh well it's not like the same as in first world country, you know, it, it, yeah. it's kind of a struggle, but it doesn't matter, as long as we like what we're doing, we're going to keep on doing it. Yeah, and if you as thought of... We're enjoying ourselves. Have you thought about singing some lyrics in um, Tagalog or Visayas? I am actually thinking about writing a song like that. I, I wrote it in my other band, Pathogen, which... Uh, oh, yeah. Which has which been, which been playing since been around since 2001. We wrote a couple of songs in the local dialect. I mean, the Philippines has got um, 85, I think, mm. dialects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lots. It's, yeah. it's kind of it's kind of weird. You go to a different province and everyone's speaking differently. You know. Yeah. And I, and I live in and I live and I live in in the island of Luzon where we speak the the Tagalog dialect, and actually there are more Filipinos speaking Cebuano than Tagalog, and so I'm um, kind of weird traveling around the Philippines, meeting people, and sometimes I, when we go to another province, like in Pampanga or Tarlac, I, I couldn't understand what we're trying to say. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay, anyway, yeah. We can communicate with English, so that's... Uh, that's a plus. That's um, a big advantage, I think. Um, well, it's it's an official language. English, I think, is is one of the only countries. Yep. Uh, Philippines uh, is one of the only countries uh, in Asia. Uh, yep. Philipp- with yes, an, English is an official language. It's an language. official language here. Yeah, yeah. It's it's great to travel around the Philippines anyway for me because English is everywhere, and I I can speak a few words in Cebuano, but not enough, not nearly enough to get by. Hey, that's good, man. I don't even know any word in Cebuano. Oh, just just whatever my mother-in-law tells Except me to say. Except for the bad words, of course. <laughs> oh yeah, the swear words. <laughs> yeah. Except for the curse words and the other. Um... <laughs> yeah. So have you got this? Just talking what we're talking about. I understand. You know, it's very difficult to do this, but 
there would be a demand for you to go and play some some shows maybe in Europe or even America, yeah. I'd imagine. Overseas, yes. We got offered a lot of shows overseas with my other band, Patagon. It's actually a, a bit more well-known than than Omen. So as, as for Omen, we don't have... We, we have yet to... Uh, we have yet to have any offers from other people, but we have actually we haven't played overseas yet. A lot of the yeah. deals we made from other labels and other productions overseas just didn't sell through. So I think we're we're just waiting for the perfect timing. Let's try to uh, force things to happen, stuff like that. In the underground scene, deals. Yeah. A lot of deals can fall through at any moment and uh, a lot of unexpected things can happen. So I think we have to wait for the for the right moment for the perfect time. And what's what's a typical deal look like for you? So you pay your own airfare to, to get out of the Philippines to whatever the country is and they'll pay you to do the show. Is that typically what the deal might look like? Well well it depends on the production. Some, some production would have a chance for all our airfare, and they would uh, answer all the accommodations for the show. And economically, we can still do that. Maybe we could do it 50-50, you know, pay for our return flight or something. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it, isn't it? Yeah, have, have you had any other approaches apart from myself from Australia? Excuse me, can you repeat that again? Have you had anybody else from Australia reach out to you? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh cool. There's a few um, few radio shows from I don't know from a decade ago. You're, and the um, band Beans that interviewed me. Uh, that's with, right. with my other band, Patagon. In both Australia and New Zealand, we had quite some contact there, but I don't know where they are now. It's been a decade now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can imagine. But, but I'm, but I'm pretty. But I'm, I'm really aware that a lot. Of, there's a very uh, active underground scene in a, in Australia, and also New Zealand. Got a lot of contacts there. Yeah, there is. You're right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit like it is everywhere else in the world. In, in a first world country, I'm talking about. Uh, in that, there's opportunities to play shows and the like. But you've got to play shows with a lot of bands. So there might be, say, eight bands on a show in order for it to be economically viable for a promoter to put on a show and therefore for bands to travel. So there, and probably being in Australia too, the other great benefit is that we're constantly getting touring artists through. So Satyricon are going to be here next month. Uh, we've just had Ashan from hey. Emperor come through. So every month there's somebody coming through. And I just spoke to Mortis uh, a couple of weeks back. Uh, he just came through town recently. I guess because there's a very big market for for metal in in Australia compared to the Philippines. I mean, a lot of international bands are coming in, coming to play in places like Singapore lately. Almost every month, there's some yeah. big name European act playing in Singapore, European or American act playing in Singapore. Almost every month. Yeah, and that's yeah. good. And here in the Philippines, you rarely get. Well, it actually increased a lot compared to uh, 10 years ago. We did a lot of foreign bands come here and play, like Angel Corps last year and Slayer. Yeah, I saw that. That's what I was and, mentioning uh, earlier. I saw them come through. Well, they were there when I when I was in Cebu. They came through town. You didn't get to see them? Oh, man. No, I missed it. No, I, I they was... They ripped. My bet. Oh, they were a phenomenal rip. band, yeah. Yeah, and... Amazing band. Yeah. Did you get to meet Peter? Yes. Yeah, I did get to talk to him for a short time. Oh, cool. And uh, it's kind of stuff. The, the original guitar player, Gene, isn't, isn't with him. You know? I, I, I used to uh, be in contact and do some trade with Gene back when I was doing a uh, fanzine back in the late 90s when I was a teenager. That's where I started actually when I was a before I started Obeto, I was editing my own fanzine called Synapse, and then it became Dead Reckoning around 2001, I think. Yeah. And I quit altogether. <laughs> started to focus more on the music and, and in the band. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. All right, yeah. 
All right, mate. So, um, so people can. I, I've obviously I'm recording this because I've got a podcast and also a radio show, mate. So people can find your music on Bandcamp because that's how I've found you. But where else can they listen yeah, to yeah. you? Um, I think we have our own. Um, I don't know. We don't have a social media page. Never felt the need to put one out. <laughs> yeah, I had to. I had to. <laughs> Which, I, originally, we, we started Omen Club only as a side project. We never had any, you know, just probably make uh, two or three records. But, but I think things are going to a more serious tone right now. So it's like we wanted to push this band more and um, see what would come out of it, you know. Considering the results we had with the, with the second album, wow, it was unexpected to be out of the blue. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I had to contact your record label actually to get in touch with you. That's that's how we met. It up. They gave me your email address. Yeah, because I couldn't oh, yeah, find yeah. you on Facebook. Yeah. That that guy um, from New England, I think, from Connecticut. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Balder, Balder, famous Balder, I think. Oh, he's a nice guy for um, putting us in touch. From, yeah. From Eternal Death, maybe I should cut. And the TD was uh, the TD version was released in California by Nero One Records. Also recently, um, was released in May this year. Yeah, how's it how's it so, selling? Because you've only got two hundred copies to sell, haven't you? Yeah, and and the uh, Royal Disney sent us all pretty much sold out. Great, that's wonderful. There, yeah, it's it's the it's the fastest selling record that I've been involved in. Actually, in less than two weeks after we got the CD, we were all sold. Except for our individual copies, of course. That's phenomenal. And, 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 and I love the fact that you've done the cassette as well. Yeah, I, I think it has a lot to do with the digital magazine. All oh, right. Okay. Review, which has sparked a lot of curiosity among the metal community here. I think that's one of the main reasons. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to buy one of the cassette copies. Are they Are they something that you've yeah, got access, access to? I could hook you up with the uh, from California. Yeah, that'd I be did. cool. If you, I was going to ask you if you could sign it because I like getting people's signature on things, mate. But if if it's not if it's if it's not oh. in the Philippines, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Okay. And I think they're still selling the first album, the CD version of the, set, the first album in New Zealand. I should hook you up to him too, Chris. He's the guy who released our record in New Zealand. Yeah, that'd be cool, mate. Yeah, if you could do that, that'd be yeah. that'd be wonderful. I'd love to add it to the collection, the, the physical copy. That is, I'm big on getting certain bands' physical copy, and you're one of them. I'll, I'll definitely DM you on Facebook later about it, about the details. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. No, that'd be great. Yeah, mate, that's so about you, um, it. Yeah, you're right. When are you going to uh, have a vacation here again? In the oh, next twelve months for sure. Uh, we only went. Oh, okay. So we went. I'm starting uni. I'm forty, by the way. So I'm, we sound like we're about the same age. Um, but um, I'm going to university because I just had to do a career change and I'm going to uni to put a framework around all this journalism that I'm doing and creative writing that I'm doing. Um, oh. But I think when there's a semester break, so my mother-in-law, being Filipino, goes back every year um, and we just we just try to go back whenever she goes back as well. So I reckon I reckon we'll be going back maybe in the first half of next year. That's good. I'll let you know though. I'll maybe let you, you could, know though. Um, maybe maybe you can see some local metal shows there by then. Well, I'd, I'd yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love for you to give me when I when I let you know when I'm going over. I'd love for you to let me know what shows I should attend because it's very like my wife's family aren't in the metal at all. They don't. They wouldn't know. Um, and. I didn't really see anybody around that looked like a metalhead around Lapu Lapu City, so I would have stopped somebody and said, "Where do I go?" You know, but uh, there wasn't really anybody there, so I'm going to definitely need your guidance on that front. Okay, no problem, guys. Yeah, you know, so cool, mate. Well, it's been a wonderful chat. You have been listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast. My name's Andrew Mackay Smith, and that was a conversation between myself 
and a fella from the Philippines called Willie DeSamero from the band Omen Filth. Thank you so much for listening.